Hey everyone, I'm James Conrad. Feeling great coming off a USDGC win, and I know a lot of people have been wondering what exactly I've been throwing. So today, I'm gonna to show you guys what's in my bag. First things first are my AVRs. As many of y'all know, that it's what I lean on pretty heavy. I, I love throwing them, I love putting them, pretty much anything in between. Um, my go-to's for, for my circle one putts and anything inside of about 45 or 50 feet is my James Conrad Glow AVR. It's my Tour Series disc, and pretty much from the moment I've, I've laid my hands on any of these, I, I haven't looked back, you know? They do everything I need them to do. They come out of my hand clean, they have great grip, they yeah, they're nice and overstable, so I can really, really lean on them in terms of throwing and putting. You know, they can handle as much spin as I can put on them. I'm bagging three of this year's Tour Series AVRs. This one I'm putting. Um, these two I like to throw. Um, then I have one, one of my last year's version of my Tour Series AVR. This one's pretty cool because it was the first one I actually saw. I was at the Salmon River Disc Golf Tournament and someone came up to me with, with four of them asking me to sign four of them and I hadn't even gotten my batch in yet and I was like, oh my gosh, those are great. And so he ended up hooking me up with one of those and this one's been, been in the bag ever since. It was my go-to putter last year and I picked up a nice ace with it this year in, in Missoula, so very special disc to me. And then this is the only AVR I bag that's not one of my Tour Series discs. It's an old JK AVR. It's not really as old as it might look, but it's probably three years old, but with about 10 years worth of throwing going into that three years. So those are my AVRs. Working up from the AVRs, next next step would be my mid-range discs. I don't usually bag too many mid-ranges. Right now I have four in the bag. Um, one that you all have obviously seen me throw a lot is gonna be an MD4. For the last couple years, I've had some purple ones with silver stamp, but I finally lost my last one of those at MVP Open, hole 14. A little bit of a bummer, but someone in Delaware actually gave me this this blue MD4 with a Huck Lab stamp, and it it's flying just like those purple ones were. So this is a staple in my bag. If I need something really understable, I have this old Ching Rock. Uh, my buddy Cody Bradshaw actually gave me this disc, and it's it's gotten really understable over the few years I've been throwing it, and just just great for some of those touchy shots. If if I need it to really get a late break to the right, um, I'll lean on this Ching Rock, and I've bagged uh, this DX Rock 3 I started bagging at Worlds this year in Peoria, Illinois. You know your basic DX Rock 3, but just such a great flight out of this one. It, it just stands up for me nicely. I leaned on this heavily at the United States Disc Golf Championships this year. Quite a few of the tee shots I played great with. Hole 9, the, I put it in front of the drop zone on the second island all four rounds. Hole 16, I gave myself putts all four rounds. Hole 5 off the tee, drawing it away from the water, safely in bounds all four rounds. So this was definitely instrumental in, in getting me that U.S. title last week. And then the only other mid-range I like to bag is a Gator. It's just a utility disc. I don't lean on it too often, but um, the stability, the skip, um, yeah, all those things make it very useful. I like to rely pretty heavily on fairway drivers. Um, they fill up a good chunk of my bag. You know, a lot of it's AVRs and then a lot of fairway drivers. For me, the T-Bird is, is probably my go-to driver. It's not the most distance, but I've been loving these KJ Star Swirly T-Birds for quite a while now, since I first laid, laid hands on one in um, 2016, I believe. I think that's when the first run came out. And yeah, stiff but grippy plastic, really overstable out of the box, really dependable. I lean on these really often. Um, if the T-Bird's not quite gonna have the distance for me, the Star Thunderbird is another go-to. You know, just so predictable, so so consistent in the flight, you know. Um, this one started out really overstable and it's beaten in a lot over the past couple years. It has no stamp left. It's I've been throwing this one, you know, it's been one of, one of the most thrown discs I've had in my bag for the last two years. Very, very consistent. Not much movement left or right, you know, just always, always able to put this one in bounds when I need to. I added this Champion Thunderbird not too long ago because this one, as I said, is starting to get pretty beat up. So this one still has the stability. It almost almost as overstable as a Firebird, but with a bit more distance. Very, very useful disc for me to have. I was throwing it quite a few times, like the water tower hole on at Eureka is a good example. You know, I could just hit it as hard as I want outright of the water tower and it would fade predictably in right, right towards the bucket. 
If I need something a bit less stable, I've been relying pretty heavily on this FD, a Nate Perkins Night Strike. He gave me this disc last year and just nice amount of stand up to it. Really, really useful disc, especially on wooded track. It's always good to have a Firebird in the bag. This one I got from the European Open, that nice line stamp. Just total meat hook, you know, I can put it on some crazy flex lines that'll fight out. I like to throw it for skip shots. If I have to bust out a tomahawk or a thumber, um, yeah, this is what I'll pr probably lean on. And then I've been bagging this Glow Sidewinder for a while too. Not quite in the same category as the fairways, but I still put it in there. It's a bit of a utility disc, maybe for a really late turn, or it's my go-to roller disc. Most of the time, a Thunderbird or a T-Bird will give me enough distance to, to really attack a course for birdie, but certain courses, you know, that 450 to 500 foot range is just not quite gonna cut it. And if I'm needing to push 500 or even more off the tee, I'm gonna be leaning for one of these. If the wind's behind me at all, maybe even from my left, I really enjoy this Star Wraith. It's been a staple in my bag this year. I get so much distance out of it. It's got a ton of glide, so yeah, downwind, or just wide open maximum distance, be leaning on this Wraith. If the wind's a little bit more towards me, or um, if I need more of a hard finish left, I'll lean for a destroyer. I have another bottom stamp here, and yeah, this, I've been leaning on this one a lot. It's really dependable. I can get nice flex lines out of it. I can get massive hyzers out of it. So yeah, great distance driver. I have one more destroyer in my bag. This one's a Calvin Heimberg Tour Series. This one's a bit more stable than this bottom stamp one, so if the wind starts to pick up a bit, um, yeah, lean on this one. But it's not quite as stable as this PD2. This is my number one slot, most overstable driver I have in my bag. And yeah, I've had a few rounds this year where the wind's really been crazy, been, been in our face hard. And on those days, I'll lean on this Domi PD2 to count on that straight flight into the wind, even finishing left, just super reliable. All right, guys, that wraps up what I've got in my bag. The disc might change a little bit based on the tournament, based on what disc I might have lost recently, um, based on the conditions, but yeah, that, this is the meat of it, and hopefully it gives you all some insight into what I've been throwing, into what I lean on in certain situations, and hopefully maybe gives you an idea of a new disc to try out. Thanks so much to Innova for making such great plastic, and thanks to Johnny Disc Golf for taking the time to film this in the bag.